Welcome to another Woods Report. Happy Friday. Good Friday. Yep. Exactly. For those, those who are Christians celebrating this weekend. Mm -hmm. And then Jewish people celebrating something around this time. Yeah, I thought there was something going on too. But yeah. They're on. Yeah. But um, a lot going on, lots going on, lots going on. <laughs> Which I wanted to start. Lot? It's it's a lot of the it's, same it's, stuff. There's some some things going on, but some really deep topics. Yeah, some things that's going on with race related. Yeah. Stuff too. So my thing is, um, um, I wanted to. Well, first of all, everybody's having. I guess some people are out of town for Easter. Some yeah. people are doing stuff for Easter. Mm -hmm. What are you doing for Easter? What do you mean? What am I doing? What do you got going on for Easter? Visiting some friends. They invited us over for dinner for mm -hmm. Resurrection Sunday. Mm -hmm. Years ago, we used to call it Easter Sunday. Yeah, and why they change it? Some churches have say Resurrection Sunday now because I guess Easter makes you feel like you're so into the, the thing of bunnies and eggs and stuff. So Resurrection Sunday for some people is what it's really meaning, the, the deep meaning of it. I in hope celebration people, of Christ and him right. being risen. That's when we celebrate it. Right. right. That's why they call it, Most some churches are starting to call it Resurrection Sunday now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like even funerals. We say funerals, but a lot now of people say, say memorial. Or go, a home going. Home going. Yeah. Home going. Home going and what if it's, a, is it a home going for somebody who didn't have that? Wasn't that yeah, they're still going home. They're going somewhere? They're going to the home. They're going to their home. What's the home? It could be up or down. It's still home. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Still going home. Okay. All right. So um, I wanted to talk about this guy, Coleman Hughes. Were you going to talk first before you bring in? We, no, we don't see. It. it has to say they there, Lenore. Oh, it does? Oh, yeah. on the thing. Every okay. show we end up trampling off. I'm of sorry. I didn't know to... this was going to be our hint. Yes. Okay. Not yeah. our phone. Okay. But it's every time. It's okay. like, it's, it's I just, the same I thing. didn't want to go through a topic without you yeah. know, knowing that she's there. Yeah. Okay. So... It. The same and then thing. that's that picture there, just so you know. You said make it separate. What you mean? That um the story thing as an image by itself. Oh yeah. yeah just so you know. Yeah, because it's like it's like every time. And I'd like to be seamless, but it never goes that way for some yeah. reason. But anyway, um I wanted to talk about Coleman Hughes. Mm -hmm. He was on the view this past week. Mm-hmm. Very smart guy. And very yeah. intelligent young man. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he has different ideas. He's young. He's black. Mm -hmm. um, he has different ideas. Mm -hmm. And they said Sonny told him pieces. Oh, they say that? That's that was what the people, feedback that you say? That's what everybody's talking about. I don't think about. she did. I think he answered very well. Well, they saying she was rude. She, she was, was very she rude. She was very rude. It says the um, writer Coleman Hughes went on The View and was greeted almost as though he had shown up wearing a white hood thank you thank you it said hughes a soft-spoken black intellectual who is a political independent was talking about his new book the end of race politics arguments for a color blind america mm -hmm. once upon a time color blindness was a was an uncontroversial uncon idea mm -hmm. it was considered the core of american idea and worth aspiring to even if we were fought, failing to live up to it. In recent decades, though, it, it has run into a buzzsaw of opposition. It clashes with the left's rear, near theology commitment to racial preferences, right. especially on college campuses mm -hmm. with fashionable new forms of left-wing mm -hmm. racism. Yep. So it is naive, out of date, and worse, even a tool of oppression mm -hmm. used by sneaky racists to hide their um, design um, of rhetoric. This was the attitude of co-host Sunny. Um, yeah, host. yeah, how she came at him. And so, mind you, I was telling my sister she did a ancest ancestry um, yes. search for her mom and dad's side. Mm -hmm. Her feelings was hurt when he when he told her that her mom is from Spain. She's mm. not black. Mm -hmm. And her mom's family, mm -hmm. historically, they own slaves. Mm. So her mom was, because her mom is an advocate for blacks so what as is well. Because she? she married a black, her dad is black. What black. is Sonny then? She's mixed. She's a bi, uh, she's biracial. She's black, Spanish, Spa you know, from Spain, mm -hmm. from Puerto Rico. So what, she so thought she was, blended. she thought her mother was mostly her mom black? Thought she, yeah, her mom thought she was Puerto, probably Puerto Rican. Yeah, I mean, 
Yeah. Thank you. But I see where he's been hit from a lot of adversaries regarding the word, the title, colorblindness. It says the left always wants to retroactively enlist MLK for woke racial causes and thinks, thinking. But Hughes convincingly locates the great civil rights leader firmly within the colorblind tradition. Hmm. Okay, so we'll let's look and see what they say first, and then we'll talk about okay. what we think. We're kind of a mixture. Well, I am of both, of him, and then what, like Whoopi was saying. I should ask you to 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 do is explain to folks mm. what you mean mm. by this arguments for a colorblind America. What do you mean when you say that? So a lot of people equate colorblindness to I don't see race mm -hmm. or to pretending not to see race. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big mistake. We all see race, mm -hmm. right? And we're all capable of being racially biased, so we should all be self-aware to that possibility. My argument is not for that. My argument is that we should try our very best to treat people without regard to race, both in our personal lives and our public policy. Of course. And the reason I wrote this book, thank you. you can clap the reason I wrote this book is because in the past 10 years, it has be become very popular to, in the name of anti-racism, mm -hmm. teach a kind of philosophy to our children and in general that says your race is everything, right? And I think that is the wrong way to fight racism. And that's why I wrote this book at this time. Can I, I'm sorry, baby. Yeah. Can I just point out that there is a reason for that? You know, when I went to school, getting any information about anyone's race was not taught <coughs> in history. There was no black history. None of those things were taught. And here in America, 100 years ago, when I was a young woman, <laughs> that's how people saw you. That's how they judged you. So I think, I don't want to say it's the, your youth, but I think you have a, a point, but I think you have to also take into consideration what people have lived through in order to understand why there has been such a, a, a pointing of very specific racial things, like women couldn't go to get into colleges if you are. Okay, so we'll get more deep into it. Um, but that's when I was kind of saying where I kind of agree with the approach when that um, um, Whoopi went to. She's saying she didn't discredit what he said. Right. She just said she equates that to his view. Keep in mind. Because you didn't have to go through the stuff that like I went through and my mom went through and they're still alive. Right. When you tell somebody to sit on the back of the bus because they're black, that doesn't go away. Or black only found drinking. Found yeah, drink. that doesn't if that's been instilled in you or even the way we we'll get deeper into this, but even the way we even look in within our own race on color, mm -hmm. light skin versus dark exactly. skin. Even how we even look at white people. Like a lot of times if a white person says something, black people will listen to it. Right. But if a black person says the exact same thing, they won't listen to it. Right. Or that crab in a bucket mentality that's been embedded. So there's some things so that we got to, there's some things that we have internally as a, as a people mm -hmm. that we have to work through. So yes, we aspire to go to the, mm -hmm. The color blindness. To get to that. Yes, I agree with him on and that. And I think the younger generation is on their way. Exactly. Because for various reasons, I was telling my sister, do you know a lot of youth today, we, we talk about, because a lot of people, he had pushback when it comes to affirmative action, mm -hmm. those kind of programs that help uh, hopefully the playing field to be right. the same. But I told her, I said, that's going to be hard to do moving forward when you have on an application um, you skip my race. Kids are looking right. at fo those five categories and saying, I'm in all of them. Right. Or I'm in three of them. Yes. I'm skipping. You won't know exactly. that they're black, white, right. Asian, Hispanic when they go into a school yes. to say, uh, we got 10 Hispanics here. Let's get programs for them to get their money, whatever. So he's probably getting clearing up the way to start right. thinking that way. And a lot of old school people, they don't want to go that we, route. We haven't, because we've had bad experiences with not having the playing field. Right. The same. Now this is Sonny. Yeah. Well, in a more accurate way. 
play it. Just, and, and not my ahead. question, but when you say that uh, socioeconomics picks out people in a better way than mm -hmm. race, mm -hmm. When you do look at the socioeconomics, you see the huge disparity between white households and black households. You see the huge disparity between white households and Hispanic households. So your argument, and I've read your book twice because I wanted to give it a chance, mm. um, your argument that race has no place in that equation is really fundamentally flawed in my no, opinion. No, well. Now, what they're talking about is, let's go for, let's say, poverty. What he's saying is kind of what Obama was saying. Mm -hmm. We have poverty. Right. So let's fix poverty. Yes. Regardless of color. If we fix poverty, Regardless then the black that. people in poverty will be fixed. Because we know that there's a large percentage of people of color, black, Hispanic, whatever, yes. that are poor. But you're looking at poor across the board. Right. Now. I agree with him on that. Mm -hmm. Now, the part that Sonny was saying was that a large part of people in poverty are people of color. Mm -hmm. So you can't just say, well, let's just fix poverty and that'll fix that. That both of them are correct in a certain way. Let me tell you why, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. He's right, like Obama said. This, this was the flaws that Obama had that, uh, that I saw him as president. Yes, you can fix poverty and it will fix the black brown people that's in poverty. But there's a re you got to also fix the reason why they are in poverty. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Right. It's almost like I always give that example of you walk by somebody's house and it's flooded. Mm -hmm. And they're taking a bucket and they're taking the water and they're dipping it out of the house, the water out of the house. Mm -hmm. But there's you can see on the side there's water still coming in. Ooh, okay. So uh, you're absolutely correct. They need somebody to come in and help with buckets to get the water that's out of there, mm -hmm. which is everybody. Mm -hmm. But we got to close the hole mm -hmm. or water's just going to keep coming in. Mm -hmm. So you have to fix the reason why mm -hmm. there are more black and brown people that are uh, in poverty. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what Sonny's saying. I think she just didn't say it right. Mm -hmm. She was very confrontational with yes, him. Yes, she was. And it was like, you're flawed. No, he's not. No, he's, not. he's absolutely correct. Thank you. Fix, so everybody needs to get in with a bucket mm -hmm. and let's get because that water problem, out the house. Because the poverty problem is hitting different races. All races, white people, everybody's, mm -hmm. any, it doesn't, poverty doesn't see a color. It doesn't. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So if we fix poverty, mm. we will fix the black people and the brown people. You eventually will fix the, the, net, the large group that yes. is in poverty. But what Sonny's saying, which she didn't say it correctly, mm -hmm. you got to fix the hole mm. of water that's coming in the house. Mm -hmm. you, it, it's a reason why black and brown people are at the highest part. Mm -hmm. That has to be looked at separately. Mm -hmm. That's what she's saying. But she didn't say that right. Right. She rather dismissed what he said and say he was wrong rather than say, it's how flawed. can the two work together? Exactly, exactly. And that, to me, shows that you're open. If you're calling yourself on a show called The View, that's why a lot of people who have different views do not come on the show as freely as you want them to. Exactly. Because she, I understand there are advocates for Blacks, specifically. There are advocates for Latinos. There are advocates for Asian, whatever your ethnicity is, or you may just be pushing towards yes. that. So yes, there's specific programs to address the people of color that are poor versus everybody that's poor, right. because maybe you have a connection yep. with your people or your race, or if you had a church in that community, whatever your connection is, yep. you're targeting a certain group right. of people that are poor. Right. But he's saying, let's, uh, let's probably aspire yes. to not always put color on I something. Agree. I agree. So it's more than one cut reason why something can be I agree. to get your stats. I agree. So go ahead. So, and, and what he's saying, to be perfectly honest, if you look at the whole and, and concentrate on the whole, that has no color. Because if there's a reason why most black and brown people are um, in poverty, 
If you concentrate on why that water is coming in, you'll still take care of it. Mm -hmm. He's saying, why don't we look at the problem and not put a particular color on it? Yes. That's kind of what he's saying. Yes. And that's somebody like Whoopi was saying, uh -huh. he's young. So yeah. his mindset is not going to be like somebody who was told to sit in the back of the bus. Right. And it, But I'm saying he's still going to find a solution. So why would she tear down what he's saying? Yeah, because both of, everybody should be on the same page to not to bring those numbers down. And my thing is, absolutely, when I read this article just in the beginning, that's why I'm not a Democrat. Okay. Because I feel like Democrats focus on the color more than the solution and become sometimes a crutch and you become why keep give why keep putting people in the house with a bucket to get rid of the water uh -huh. and not concentrate on why the water is coming in the house and i just and i found out years ago with you a, have, you give with, you're not helping with a friend of mine like for example welfare yeah a lot of people welfare is broken we need to really look at it and examine it it'd be sad if the country take it away because a lot yes. of people would be hurt but I didn't. I didn't realize that each state has its own like each one has process its own in place on how they handle welfare. And Democrats need to be any of these programs that you have people on. Mm -hmm. Your objection should be to get them off of it, right? Not years and years yes. and generation and generation. Yes. Yes. No, and that's the thing I don't like about generations Democrats. are have been on it. Whoopi said she was on it. Yes, for a, a season. Yes. It's for a season and then move on. It gave her boots boot straps. Yes. To lift herself. So up. that's my only yes, thing. Is yes. they never concentrate on closing the hole. Mm. They always concentrate on the problem. Just clearing the water out the house. They never look at the solution of how to close that hole. Where up. More water don't come in. Yes, yes. Okay. So that was my whole thing with her okay. going after him. Two separate questions. One is whether each racial group is socioeconomically the same that well, the, i agree with you they're the, not the, yeah of they're course. not and the, the stats question show is, that but the, yeah of course i agree with that fully the question is how do you how do you address that in the way that actually targets poverty the best great and what martin luther king wrote in his book why we can't wait mm -hmm. is he called it we need a bill of rights for the disadvantaged mm -hmm. and he said yes we should address racial inequality yes right. we should address the legacy of slavery but the way to do that is on the basis of class and that will disproportionately target blacks and hispanics because they're disproportionately poor but it will be doing so in a way that also helps the white poor, in a way that addresses poverty as the thing to be addressed. Then they started arguing back and forth about what Martin Luther King meant. His speech so later. So he's saying when Martin Luther King did I Have a Dream, yes. he basically is saying what, I was, what I'm saying right now, mm -hmm. which is don't judge somebody by their race, but judge them by the, the character. character. Yes. And also his other message were more along the lines of, and what I said, mm -hmm. fix the hole, and if you fix the hole, uh -huh. then black people won't get messed up either. He's pretty much, in a nutshell, doing what Martin Luther King, King did. Right. We want to aspire as a race of yes. people in this country yes. to get to that, to the where point. we don't see color. Exactly. We, we get characters. We see character right away. Yes. But he understood. Yes. There was he some, knows that it's he even yeah. said most of the racial tension was in Chicago so area. He knows so that. he knew that. And then Sonny went on to talk about how she know Martin Luther King's daughter. That has nothing and, to do with what this man said about knowing and her his later daughter. later on in his life before he passed, he was more on black, we need representation and black people and this and he said no that's not he was saying i think he's saying i, I go with what he's saying right more than what she's saying okay Be and you know why i go with more what he's saying than her because there was a distinction between him and the nation of islam yes there was a distinction so obviously he wasn't saying what they were saying exactly he was saying something different yeah that at that time was not that popular yes. with black people it wasn't because they was like, I'm not working with no white person. They no. don't like me. Love them? Yeah. Uh, so try, try to talk to them? So I don't know what Sonny's talking about. And with all due respect, his daughter does not know him. She reads like we all do about her, about dad. her dad. That's what we're... I'm he not, died when she was little. opinion, she was very young when he died. She don't know her dad like that. He didn't sit down and talk to her about reparations. She had to talk to... <laughs> Family members, Ma, how did Dad think about this? My brother, big brother, 
Oh, let me read a book. Yeah. Because she was young. Yeah. So, and if you don't even need to say you know his daughter. What is that? That has nothing anything. to do with anything, Sonny. And he You're was wrong, Sonny. And he was saying, and the way he looked like, okay, like, what does Your that point? mean? Yeah. We all read his books. Yeah. Like, she did too. Yeah, he's a very intelligent but guy. But my so thing I do is, see both. I see him both. And Whoopi. I see both. And what he's there saying. There are some mm-hmm. things that are systemic. Is yeah. that the word? Systemic? Systemic racism. That yes. I feel yes. are directly yes. black people. Yeah. And those things <laughs> need to be fixed. Or Hispanics. Or, or people of brown people, brown people. And taken care of. <laughs> now that's it. Period. Yeah. But on the other hand, I do understand him. Yeah. There are some things that are broad. Yeah. That if you look, concentrate on the broad picture of it, yeah. we'll fall in there. Yeah. If, if your whole thing is safety for the country yeah. and our military, <laughs> we fall in there. Yeah. Women. That has no race. Of uh, people of color. Mama. Yeah. You want to pull her in, please? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. once we get off the video, I can't do both. Okay. Again, now, now I'm, you let want me move more on. to show more of what she said. Yeah, though, but she, I can move on. Go ahead. Because I can't do both. We but. don't want to be too long. Yeah. Though. Okay. That part is true, but as you are a student of Dr. King, I'm not only a student of Dr. King, I know his daughter, Bernice. Right? Mm. So I, I'm, I'm going to get to my question. Go ahead. Go. Nobody care that you know his daughter. Uh, but, but he also says okay. you must include race. <clears throat> no, he didn't. He says it's yes, a. Yes, he does. Okay, well, everyone can go. Everyone should go read the book Why We Can't Wait. Let's not get sidetracked by that. Yeah. Um, I'm. I don't think I've been co-opted by anyone. I've only voted twice, both for Democrats. Mm-hmm. Although I'm an independent, I would vote for a Republican, mm-hmm. probably a non-Trump Republican, if they were compelling. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's any evidence I've been co-opted by anyone, and I think that that's. That's a, an ad hominem tactic people use to not address really the important conversations we're having here. And I, I think it's better and it would be better for everyone if we stuck to the topics rather than but make it about me. So she with, tried to make it seem like he is a Republican plant mm-hmm. and that this ideology of being mm-hmm. colorblind must is, come from is coming from the far right yes. because they pretty much want to eliminate black people. Exactly. Yeah. So he, they want you all to be colorblind so that you don't see the differences and, and how he, things need to he be fixed. He quickly started to talk about the story that happened in California with the um, woke children. Yeah. And they, they didn't go into it because they went right into her question because yep. she was pointing at Whoopi. I heard him talk about that. They had young kids, Hispanic kids who hardly spoke English uh-huh. in California school. They were teaching them about white supremacy. Mind you, one, the kids hardly spoke English, so their English needed to be taught. Mm-hmm. Number two, bad scores in math. Number three, bad scores in reading. Mm-hmm. He said not to slam the teaching of it, but right now in those kids' life, it's not about white supremacy. Right. They're young. They won't understand if they can't talk like a or write or, yeah. re- or math. He said the fundamentals are more important. That's it. We don't, we quick to throw race teeth. But you got oh, some. We, we were slaves back in 200, on. but they can't read or write. But you also got to understand that when they say they want to take, um, yeah, the, I get that. They want to yeah. take it out of um, SEI or whatever that critical, is. Critical. Uh, critical race theory. Yeah, yeah. That's not. Um, elementary schools. It's and colleges. DeSantis is trying to take it out of, of uh, colleges too. That, that's what we're saying. Yes. So that's the point. That's oh, the part that yes. people are complaining. Yes. Why are you taking critical race thinking out of college? Thank you. You got basket weaving in college for God's <laughs> sake. Take that out. Thank you. So it's a it's college oh level. God. So that's the part that a lot of the people on the right, yeah. they don't tell you that. When they say, they're trying to teach our kids blank, blank. No, they're trying to teach your college kids. Mm-hmm. So they're old enough to say whether they want to take that class or not. Thank you. So that's all I'm saying there. So I think he's I think he's a good guy. I'm, I'm going to show another one, but I'm a He's um, a free thinker like a lot a of kids free, are doing now. He's a free thinker. So let's see if you are in here um 
Wendy, why are you doing that? One thing that we talked about yesterday on our show, mm -hmm. a lot of kids are byproducts of <clears throat> byproducts of um, interracial marriages. Oh, yeah. A lot of kids. That's why when they look at that, what's your race thing? Mm -hmm. If they're trying to give money to the school or to the program for how many blacks like we tried to do in the history because mm -hmm. we want the playing field to be the same. Your whole company is all white. You need some more minorities here. Oh, okay. We need women, black, Hispanic, Asian, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you People doing are not that? Feeling One thing that, that we anymore. talked about yesterday on our show. See, that's why. Cut your volume, volume off, Wendy. Byproduct of um, interracial marriages. Oh, yeah. Wendy. Of, that's why when they look at that, what's your race thing? Mm -hmm. If they're trying to give money to the school or to the program for how many black Okay, that's what I was saying. I have to. It has to be ready to go when I go in there. Then when you need okay. to send her a note, then okay. So what was you saying? Um, but that was one of the things that we're. I had mentioned briefly in the Bible. I was like, God, what was one of the? It was a number of reasons people do their teaching on, but one of the reasons I said, God, why did you allow the children of Israel mm -hmm. to wander in the wilderness for forty day, forty years mm -hmm. for a, a two or three week trip? And I was reading and understanding he wanted a certain mindset yep. to die. Right. He want, he needed a Joshua generation ready to go with the giants and fight and do whatever. Right. And if you got old way of thinking, well, remember when we sat at the color fountain, they right. had a white fountain and a color fountain. I sat in the back of the bus. We don't want that mentality anymore because kids now are free thinkers. They're like, race? Who exactly. cares about what color he is? Or what his sexual identity is. I want to play ball with him. Yeah. I want to work with him in the company. Yeah. We don't, they don't see it like we do in my mom's age, my age. He's a free thinker. Mm -hmm. And we need to try to get on the bandwagon and understand it. Also, like what Whoopi's saying, still remind them. Right. Historically, there are still people on this country and this earth but that people don't gotta like your color. But people got to understand you can don't discourage the youth yeah. because like he said, that is what we espouse to. We're trying to get yeah. to that point. You don't want to discourage them. You had to, it's a line between letting people know. It's almost like, like a, any kid, you can do anything you want. You can blank, 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 but give them the tools. Yeah. So let me give you the history and the tools. And then as you try to go and get to this area, but what people got to understand, just like the Moses generation if you in the way, God gonna take you out. Oh, hello, God not. If you in the way of progress, yes, He's gonna take you out. Trailblazers. So you either need to get with the program, stay in your house, and just do knitting or something as an older person. But if you in the way of progress, God has a way of moving you out the way. And I believe in the situation with Paul. Saul, saw why persecuted thou me? He had to tap Saul on the shoulder. I got a plan for you, my brother. If you continue to stay in the way, I'm going to move you, you out of right. here. So, oh, he woke up and he saw, oh, okay, Lord, what I, you want me to do? I'm either part of the uh, the, the uh, plan, uh -huh. the solution, right. or I'm part of the problem. You're the problem. Yeah. Get out the way. So that's why I said I didn't think Whoopi did that. Okay. I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. She was she was kind of like, like reminding him. You're, and, and she said a lot of it has to do with your youth. Yeah. So I yeah. like that. Because she has a lot of young grandchildren yeah. and great grandchildren. Yeah. And they're biracial. Thinkers. Yes, they're biracial. All or right. they're lighter skinned. So let's say hi them. to everybody. Emerald says, salutations, everyone. Salutations yeah. to you. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy says, I'm in. We went to you, Wendy. You wasn't ready. You got to turn your background. So we'll volume volume back off. again. Yes. Make sure the volume is turned down. Yes. And yes. make sure that we can see so you we can in the bring camera. you in smooth. Um, yeah. M. Perk says, good evening, ladies. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Justin says, hey, everybody. And Christopher says, hello, greetings, and salutations. Salutations on this good salutations Friday. Salutations to this you. This good Friday. So we're going to be good to one another. All right, so we're going to talk about Lou Gossip Jr. I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. Okay, Wendy, we're coming at you. Have that background sound off. <laughs> now, Lou, you can tell him what happened to Lou Gossip Jr. Well, we found out he passed away today. Mm -hmm. One of, And he's been in a lot of movies. I like Lou Gossip. He's going to be missed. And he's older now. So um, one of the shows that I do remember, my sister and I would talk in the back. And back in the day, we were like, surely there are no shows out there that bring that uses a character and then bring them back as another character like we didn't know 
Thank uh, you. He was the dad one time. Now he a boyfriend. Bill Cosby's done it. Okay, Our, you got to go out and come back in, Wendy. Yeah, go out and come back in, Wendy. Go back in because I see her now. The link has died. Send you send a new link. Okay, okay. keep going. Go ahead. Um, so one of the things we were saying, like, okay, I'm thinking as a writer, why would you want to use the same person again and try to fool us as their different character now? And I realized Bill Cosby did that with um, uh, Denise's husband. He at the beginning he was a boyfriend to the older daughter Sandra, and then he came back as Denise. Oh, they brought him back. They brought him back as Denise's husband, military. What was her name? The little girl. Wait a minute, Denise. Um, Denise Huxtable. Huxtable, her husband. He was a boyfriend at the beginning when he first came on Bill Cosby as uh-huh. Sandra. He was trying to get her to go with, get him to go with Sandra because they oh. didn't like Alvin. Alvin was such a headache to them. So Lou Gossett played two parts in Good Times. Okay, and it hit me. I'm like. Wait a minute. He was Thelma's boyfriend because she was 17 and he was 40 something. And the parents was looking at him like, you know, James. James ain't going to go for that. Man, what's wrong with you? Go on with my daughter. <laughs> you just as old as I am. So they had him in his first scene there as the boyfriend. And he, he, she couldn't say, I love you. So he left. They brought him back to a few seasons later mm-hmm. as um, Florida's brother. When Mike got Michael got in trouble and at school and he was he punched somebody because his, his grades was better than Michael and he was jealous of the boy that was real smart. He was uh Florida's brother. So he played he played a lot of parts like that, but you wanted to bring up mainly his part in roots. Well I well well first of all, so people know Lou yeah. you said Luke Gossett Lou Jr. Gossett, passed away today. Yeah. And he was eighty seven. Eighty seven, Ma. Mm-hmm. He won an Oscar. For yeah. supporting actor. I sure did. The first black man to win a supporting actor Oscar and an Emmy winner for his role in the TV series Roots. That's why I want to show Roots. Chicken George. He's passed away today, 87. <laughs> Gossip's first cousin, Neil L. Gossip, told the Associated Press that the actor died in Santa Monica, California. So he passed away. Aww. No cause of death has been revealed. But at okay, 87. So they're still investigating. Yeah, it at 87. Up. It I could mean, be I'm anything. hoping it's nothing like he had an um, illness. But. Gossip's cousin remembered a man who walked with Nelson Mandela, mm-hmm. who also was a great joke teller, and a relative who faced and fought racism and dignity with dignity and humor. He had a sense of humor. Never mind the awards. Never mind the glitz and glamour. The Rolls Royces and the big house in Malibu. It was about humanity of the people that he stood for. That's what his cousin said. Mm-hmm. Lou Gossip always thought his early career as a reverse Cinderella story. Oh, okay. Hmm. Academy Award, he, he him for towards his Academy Award for Officer and, and a, a gentleman. gentleman. He sure was. Gossip broke through a small screen as Fiddler on the groundbreaking 1977 miniseries Roots. Roots. So let's show. Let me show. I want to show that uh, part, that one scene. <laughs> and I hope I got the right one. Let's see. This is Roots. What I got from the kitchen. I got. You know what? He stopped. <laughs> that was Dave Chappelle. When Dave Chappelle was there, did that, he was doing root stuff. That is huge. What? I can't put those chains back on you. You then went ahead and did it. Yeah. That's huge. That's huge. First time, he kept saying he wanted to be free. He kept saying he wanted to be free. Yeah. The look that Lou Gossip gave him, Fiddler. Fiddler. When Mm -hmm. he saw those chains. He saw it broken. The chain is broken. This man really want to be free, but I got to tell him something. Damn you, nigga. 
Didn't you think nothing about me? About you, Fiddler? Yeah, me. Me, me, me. You go running off in the hills, you know what's gonna happen to me? I get to sleep on a mud floor. I get to eat what the pigs won't eat. You was mine to turn into a good nigga. You go running off in everything I got, everything I work for. And it ain't much, it'll all be gone. Fiddler, want me to stay? No. You can't stay now, not with them broke off chains. <sighs> now, <laughs> let me say this and let me be clear. That's an Academy Award winner. My God. That there, the beginning Fiddler, before Kunta came back, he grew to love him. <laughs> That's Candace Owens. Why you say that? <laughs> You mess up everything. I was I sleeping good and eating good. Now I got to go back on the floor with the pigs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You messed sure it up. Sure, I'll me. drop off some nuggets to you because I care about you. You're black. My grandfather was black. I grew up in a black home. <laughs> but if you don't stop messing up and acting stupid, you're going to mess up everything we done got here. Shoot. That sound like Steve Harvey. Oh, when he was talking to Monet. Yeah, don't mess up. I got five, ten jobs. Tell huh? you something, woman. Now you keep your mind, your mouth quiet. Yeah, shut up. Now you gonna mess up what we got going on around here. I got family Negro. feud. I got all kind of stuff going on. Be a good Why don't you Negro. Just be quiet. Be quiet. Well, you think you want me to? Uh, you want me to go on the back? No, it's too late now. You didn't already say it. Yes. The Shoot. chain has been broken. Shoot. Now I got nothing to do but to help. That's what I think about Candace Owens and <laughs> Steve Hart. For this part. The chain has been broken. <laughs> now you better get on board or get out of here. <laughs> We just said in the beginning, Whoa. if you're not part of the solution, you're uh. part of the problem. <laughs> the chain has yeah. been broken. I don't know when you were getting going to it. You, that's what I'm, I'm going like, to do. What's this scene got to do with Candace? The chain is broken. Now you got one or two things to do. Uh -huh. You need to help me uh -huh. get out of here. Because <laughs> what's going on forward, you're never going to get what you oh, had before. Wow. And you got that, uh, Miss Candace, when you got fired. Mm, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, now you didn't get no oatmeal every morning anymore like that <laughs> did. I'm looking at my man acting. Very good oh, actor. Acting was very good. I, but that's what he was saying. Yeah, yeah. And that's, what, up us. and that's what he was it portraying. That's kind of like, don't do you think that that was um, um, Samuel Jackson's character in Django? Like keep, no. keep keep them keep absolutely them. not Fiddler absolutely no, not how dare you no the mindset of no that's not him no he wanted to keep people down that wasn't Fiddler <laughs> Fiddler wanted to like Steve Harvey just maintain leave me alone like oh, let, let, let okay. everybody relax Every, oh, was, uh, that uh, dude and <laughs> Samuel Jackson <laughs> he probably would have killed him himself Samuel <laughs> Jackson was he he he. Samuel Jackson was, <laughs> he was one master. 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 Yes. Master and broke the chain. Yes. He broke the chain, master. Shut up. Shut up. I'm trying to get out of here. <laughs> or not even give him no food. And the master got to beg him to okay, feed him. Okay, pardon me. Thank pardon you. Pardon me. I got the wrong slave no. mentality. No. Because it's different slavery but mentality. But never had a mentality of a lot of black people. Yeah. But that quiet. chain is broken. So yeah. you either got to get on board and become part of the solution or you're part of the problem. And that's how I feel about Candace Owens and people like they are part of the problem. Okay. They yeah. still trying to maintain that eating oatmeal and sleeping on a nice mat. Mm -hmm. You're still in a slave house, you big dummy. <laughs> But she thinks she's better, though. Well, she found out the hard way she's not. Yeah, she lost her job like anybody else. That Thank you. Say something crazy. All right, so okay. there we go. Go ahead. But I, he, wonderful actor. Yes. An right. officer and a gentleman. He yes. was good. Yes, officer and a gentleman. Um, All right, so let's try. We're going to try come back, Wendy. See if you're there. Yeah, let's do All this. All right, let's see. want to hear story time. What else you think on. about? Um, There you are. There we go. All right, turn your, turn your volume down. We're going to put you on live. Damn. Okay. There you go. All right, there you go. All right. All right. All right, girlfriend. Okay. Yeah, it was blowing us out last time. Okay, and... um, I don't see myself on the screen, though. You don't? No, no, it's a lag. You're on there. It's a lag? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And give it another few seconds. Did you have anything else about Lou Gossett? No, we, we're talking about Lou Gossett. So if you can hear us, because you're the Miss Actress, so you know. 
This yeah, man was I was a very, very good sorry actor. to hear about that. Uh, I was very sorry to hear about that. I've always loved Lou Gossett. He definitely was a gentleman. He always played the very distinguished parts. He played very powerful parts. He was a very natural actor. He didn't really act. He became. And I had, the, uh, and he won an Academy Award also. Mm -hmm. One of the few ones who did. So God bless his soul. May he rest in peace. Have yeah. you ever had a chance to work with him or did you meet him or anything? No, I never met him. Never met him. Never had a chance to meet with him. But I've always heard very good things about him. Never heard anything negative. Yeah. Good yeah. act, good man. We were just showing a part of Do you Bruce. see yourself now? Can you see it? Can you see you? No. no. I still don't see myself. Oh, uh, you probably got to pull, move the thing forward. You're, um, thing, you in a, you're probably uh, behind. The camera. Do you see Lou Gossip Jr. in the corner? I see uh, LeVar Burton and Louis Gossip Jr. Yeah, Jr. You yes. You behind right now. Okay. So that's what's You'll going catch on. Up. Yeah, go ahead. Well, she has to pull her thing up so she can catch up. Okay. Beyonce, that's all everybody They've been, been talking, talking about. They've been talking about this all day on CNN, and she dropped her whole country um, album. album. Back in the day, we said album, CD, whatever they yeah, call it they now. still say album. They still say album, and good reports, bad reports. It says, I haven't heard any bad reports. You have bad reports? I haven't heard. CNN has been positive. Oh, okay. But every now and then, you'll get a... Really? Yeah. Okay. Like they did, yes, last time. That one, not the comment that the guy made about peeing on the I tree. know. That was really mean. Okay. Well, it says, how long have fans been speculating um, about or over the details of Beyonce's new album? It depends when you start counting. Some began buzzing it over it when she released those two songs you said. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, 16 Carriages mm -hmm. and um, what was it? Hold Em? Texas Hold Em? Texas Hold Em. Those are the ones that we heard all the time. Right. Now, the things that they're saying here is that um, some people think it's better than Renaissance. They they were saying, well, how true is the news? They were saying she was her plan was to release this one first before the Renaissance CD. And I didn't know that. So how true is that? But that's what they're saying. And they said each track, it seems like she can make a full length movie out of each track. Like she was trying to go for that. And it was one song that CNN talked about. She's mixing the genre. Yeah. And 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 to them, that was good because it's it's taking you on a whole new journey with this music, of uh, this country music. Because she had, there was some back bass there that's more like a hip hop mm -hmm. move. You can kind of hear that. And I'm like, well, I probably need to hear the songs that he's talking about. Mm -hmm. But this day and age, like we talked about race, we're dealing with a different generation of musicians, actors, um, free thinkers, even with race-related issues. This woman, she don't even need the CMT Awards. If no, she got she enough doesn't. fans to follow well, her till she gets to that It top. looks here like the, she kind of going along the lines of what I was saying about yeah. the history of country music. Okay. They said it seems here um, it's an image that runs counter to experience that inspired the album performing her song Daddy Lessons at the CMA Awards in 2016 Whereas um, what she did not feel welcome. Mm -hmm. It was very clear that I wasn't. The Cowboy Carter character exists in conversation with the history of black cowboys. Remember, we talked about that. Mm -hmm. The loaded meaning behind the term and the function in American imagination. And how, remember, we talked about the history of, of cowboy music. Right. I mean, of country music. country music. And the black cowboys was blending all of these different sounds and putting it together. Now, a lot of people don't realize that if they are, you will hear people give a history of country music and they'll say, oh, it's from, this is from Spain and this is from, you know, Ireland and this is from the Africans and this is from, somebody had to put all that together. Well, you and I still differ on the, yeah. the origin of and it. And then when you go back and look at history, did you know they used to make people, white people used to paint themselves blackface to mm -hmm. sing country to western sing music? sing the folk songs and stuff, yeah. They identified that music with, with black people. people. So, okay. you know, let's go. Now, she went, she said there are plenty of um, country sounds. That's what you were saying. She blended a lot of different sounds in yeah, this. Yeah, because I told you there's still folk music. There's still, there's different, even within the genre itself, there's different styles of country. 
So now she has a lot of people. I told you some icons. Um, Willie Nelson. That's part of her project. Uh huh. Yes. She has um, Linda Mart- Part Martell. Mm-hmm. She has Dolly Parton. Mm-hmm. She has um, Miley Cyrus. Mm-hmm. She redid um, Parton's nineteen seventy three hit Jolene. Jolene. Mm-hmm. Yep. And my thing is too in any kind of music, um, no matter what genre you are. As a musician, as an artist, Mm -hmm. I shouldn't hear artist, an artist who has open mind of free thinking, free style. uh, We know art is subjective. You can look at the blue and go, I like the blue. And another person can say, no, I want green. But be open to the fact that we have different ideals and creativity. I shouldn't hear any um, artist be negative with her or anybody in any genre of music. Nah. I don't get it. She has beyond the many featured guests. Other behind the scenes contributors are the Dream Pharrell. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Um, Ryan Betty, Switz Beats. Mm-hmm. Um, John Batiste. Yeah, a lot Mil- of people are Mil- using Mil- John Rogers, Gospel pedals. Uh, Robert Randolph, mm-hmm. blues person Gary Clark. Hip hop. See, that's why it has all these sounds in it. Exactly. And she says, even Stevie Wonder. Yes. They all worked on this album. Yeah. That's why you hear that collaboration and that difference of sound. Yes. So. And I, wouldn't you not work with a, a artist that's at her level? Like if Taylor Swift says, I need you guys, would, are you open to work with me on a, what, what artist would go, no? Thank you. Taylor, what you need me to do? So this is Jolene. Hopefully this. Commercial on now at Verizon, trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro and iPad and Apple Watch SE all on us. Get paid. Jolene, that's the same as Jolene, which is a song that everybody, that's like a, a, that's a huge song. What's the one with Miley Cyrus? Um, oh, here's Willie Nelson. The Smoke Hour on KNTRY Radio, Texas. You know my name. No need to know yours. So he's now for this next tune, I want y'all to sit back, inhale, and go to that good place your mind likes to wander off to. Oh, got him doing a Snoop, so he did a Snoop, uh, uh, Snoop Dogg. Uh, so he does a. Uh, 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 so she starts all of them off like this. Looks like. And let her sing country music. That's what I'm saying. You get when you said what negative. There's some black people that's negative with this. It's not just other white people or any other race. This woman want to do whatever she wants to do. We don't say, oh, you know what? I take it back. Forgive me for being hip, 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 hypocrisy. Years ago, my sister would always challenge me when um a a, a secular artist who. We all may judge their lifestyle, mm-hmm. go and sing gospel. Oh, yeah. How dare they sing gospel? He ain't living his life worth the beans. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, let him do a gospel album if he wants to. Well, she got more than one song with um, Dolly Parton. Yeah, she does. Oh, they said that? Oh. Yeah, she was very heavy on the project. That's why Dolly would say, that's not country, that's right. She got that water, hangman got that water. Don't act like I don't know. Clean this one in um what's his 
name? Um, down, down, baby. Well, right, right, right. His, his do it with, if you with hear his this, name. If you're a country western person and they put this on there, they'll say that's not country music. Or what's his name? The uh, the black, the young black guy. Um, I get what you're saying. Little, little. Uh, hey. Don't play me and go. Yeah. I am such a tie. Give me some shots. Are you with me or not? Throw it back. Man. Was he from South Africa? Yeah, he was from South Africa on our cruise ship. Black man singing country. I like that song. Yes, ma'am. Daddy loved country. You don't make me get up on my seat. Broke the internet again. Oh, it's coming in really fast. Yes, boys and fun. Her commercials helped kind of promote it. Hey, Miss Honeybee, it's Dolly B. You know that hussy with the good hair you sing about? Reminded me of someone I knew back when. Except she has flaming locks of auburn hair. Bless her heart. <laughs> Just a hair of a different... So in other words, she's saying, you talked about me when I came out. Yeah. So that's that's why I like Dolly Parton. Yeah. She, she's she's always a person that, that connects with um, any... She's done a rock. Recently done her rock... Um, music uh, she jumped into rock the rock music right and did something with some rock artists so you're gonna get shunned talked about dogged out it don't matter it says there are um mike says there are several black country music artists um darius rucker yeah second right. chance little nas x, little that's nas he, x. He, he just started off with that country song but he's not a country uh western singer he's a rapper isn't he well i don't know well he's like on. what's his name from st louis no 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 no, no, he's a rapper. Yeah, he just did a country song. You talking about Nelly? Nelly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, so I would say listen to it. It's on YouTube for free. Okay. You can listen to the whole the whole album. Oh. But you heard that one song. That's that didn't. That was more of a hip hop type of sound. Mm -hmm. That's what the guy said on CNN. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. she, she has you more. Can hear the the when they laid the tracks down, you can hear some um, hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we always try to do something funny. So I put this in there. Um, this doll, my, you know, I always do dolls. Yeah. This doll, oh, she want me to make it bigger every time I do that. Cause I always make it small. Is it red? No, no, you right, you fine. Um, this doll likes his food prepared a certain way. It's okay. not the dog that they cook in front of. Hold on. I want to thank you for all my lovely gifts. I love them all. I didn't even know there was a Woods Cup. I was wondering. I thought it was going to be a t-shirt. I didn't even know you had cups. I love it. I love my gift card. I love my snacks. Thank you, Mom, for your word. Everything was just a beautiful surprise. Uh, Ma, you had your thing. <laughs> Ma, Wendy is thanking you. Oh, yeah. oh she's so happy. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I really, it, was, it was really a great surprise, especially Especially this cup. How do I get a Woods t-shirt? Um, we'll send you the red bubble. Huh? Red bubble. We'll give she you the is. link. Because everybody listening, okay. we can send them the link to, to red bubble. Okay. And you can get our logo on anything. A shirt, a cup, okay. a shower curtain, yeah, send whatever. That me, send that to me because I'd like to have one. Okay. But okay. last week, Lenore, you had asked me to do Carol King. 
I had great difficulty doing Carol Channing. Oh. And the reason, is, the reason is because she was in exile. When you pass, you give up a lot. You give up your privacy. You have to be deceitful. You have to be sneaky. You have to look over your shoulder. Wow. You have to give up any relatives that are oh, dark, whether it's right. your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your cousin, yeah. your grandparents. You can't be associated with yeah. anybody in your family. You if you bump into them, you have to act like you don't know them. Mm -hmm. You hear white people talk about how dirty, nasty, and lazy and trice when black people are. Mm -hmm. It is a hell of a life. You're always scared. You're always nervous, and you could go to jail. Yeah. So there wasn't a lot on the Carol Channing because she had to be very secretive. You give up your culture, you give up your heritage. She couldn't go to the March on Washington because people would have been suspicious of her. How many times was she in a room and heard people say, look at that Negro, yeah. that nasty, dirty Negro. You know, it's a horrible way to live because you cannot be yourself. Right. You cannot embrace your own culture. Carol so, didn't find out that she was black until she was 16 years old. And her mother instructed her, now listen, I want you to stay out of the sun. And you know, when you have a child, it may be born black. Who wants to live like that? Right. That's how she lived. I looked high and low. There was nothing on her. She had to keep her mouth shut. She didn't let people know that she didn't acknowledge that she was black until she was 81, although she died in 97. And when she did, she said, well, that's why I can sing and dance so well. So she was a racist herself. Mm. <laughs> she won many awards. She won the Tony Awards. She was on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Oh. She did Hello Dolly 5,000 times. Yes. She yes. had a son, but her son's relationship with her really deteriorated after he had a daughter because he was confronted with whether or not he could tell his daughter the truth or not. So they never really connected. To me, it's a miserable way to live. Yes. It has nothing to do with being an Uncle Tom. An Uncle Tom is something totally different. That's just a real shameful person, a kiss-ass person. But when you pass, you literally give up who you are. Mm -hmm. You give up your soul. Just imagine standing next to your brother or sister and you can't acknowledge them. Mm -hmm. Imagine how that felt to them also. So there was not a lot on Carol Channing because she probably kept her mouth shut most of the time. She was around when the March on Washington occurred, but I'm sure she did not attend or even feel that type of connection. Mm. Carol okay. Channing lived to be 97 years old. Wow, 97. She died of causes. When she died, they turned out all the lights on Broadway oh. because she was a large Broadway star. She was a remarkable person, but she lived a fake life all her life until she was 87 years old. And just imagine her mother telling her, I want you to stay out of the sun. Really? She didn't want her to be Your dark. Child might be black. Yeah. Because that's the way she lived. So God rest her soul. Rest in peace, Carol Chan. Okay. The next person I want to do, a lot of people said she was a diva. She was a big girl, robust. She stood four foot eleven and, and weighed as much as three hundred pounds. How much? 300. Oh, okay. Ooh, lightweight. That, that wasn't her regular <laughs> weight. That wasn't her regular weight, but she ballooned to that weight. Really? Okay. So we're she trying to get it. She's a, a lightweight. Huh? She's a lightweight. Really? <laughs> now keep moving. Keep yeah. talking. <laughs> she also was a big Broadway star. Her Ooh. last name is the same as Jay Z's. What is her name? Jay Z's last name. Oh, Jay Z. Um, what's Jay Z's last name? Um, uh, Carter. Oh, Nell Carter. Nell Carter. Nell Carter. Cause she was. Nell Carter she was, was born in 1948. 
Now, mind you, 300 pounds, was, 300 pounds wasn't her normal weight. She could balloon to oh, 300. Yeah. She has been 300 up and down. Anyway, Nell Carter's life started off with a tragic bang. When she was just two years old, her father, a sergeant in the Army, was tragically electrocuted right in front of her when he stepped on a live wire. Aww. Although she was two years old, a hideous sight like that had to be seared into her subconscious mind. She had a lot of tragedy in her life. Aww. In 1963, as indicated in Spike Lee's movie, Four Little Girls, four little girls were bombed in a church. They laid 19 sticks of dynamite under the step on the east side of the church, and then it was on a timer, and it blew up. Nell saw this from her porch, and it traumatized her because these four little girls were her friends. Oh. That was another tragedy in Nell's God, life. Must have died that way. Oh, mm. When Nell's father was killed, it left her mother heartbroken, of course, and it also left her the single parent to nine children. Nell was number five. Mm. So her support system was to keep her children in church at all times, which Nell didn't mind because she loved to sing so much. Yeah. They formed a gospel group called the Renaissance Ensemble. And they started singing in coffee fa coffee fa mm, cafes, coffee houses, small clubs, anywhere they could sing and make a little money. Not even quit school, and they were quite busy. They sang everywhere that they were asked to sing and got a pretty nice amount of money. They were so good, as a matter of fact, they got a regular spot on a weekly radio show yeah. on the air. So she was a big star within her own town. You said she was born in yeah. Alabama, right? She was born in Alabama in 1948. 48. Okay. 1948. 1948, one of nine children. She was number five. Wow. Okay. One night after the show, because they did shows everywhere, and Nell just loved singing with this group. One night after the show, she was on her way home, and she was having difficulty finding a ride, and luckily, she saw it. She uh, saw somebody she knew for years, and he offered her a ride. So she was like, yeah, sure, thanks. I'm so tired. So she gets in the car, and she's just talking small talk. And she goes, you remember when Sally Henson got hit in the head with that baseball in the middle of prom? <laughs> you remember that? And she threw her neck back to laugh. And when she threw her neck back, her neck was met with the muzzle of a cold gun. He said, take your clothes off and don't forget to take off your panty. And that was somebody she knew. Somebody she knew. Mm. And he, he violated her repeatedly. Take off your bra and your panties. Open your legs, girl, or I kill you with this here gun. I will blow your brains out. Open your legs, I said. And he violated her over and over and over again. When she got home, she didn't tell her mother immediately because she was scared to death. Mm. And eventually it told on itself because she had become pregnant. Her mother said, you nasty little trifling slut. How dare you come in this house with a baby, you nasty little heifer. Her mother blamed her, and the church shunned her. Mm. Luckily, when the baby was born, her eldest sister was gracious enough to take the child in. Well, now look, this is her way of escape. And with just $300 in her pocket, she escaped to you know where every, everybody goes. New York City. Oh, okay. When she I got to New it. York, she continued to sing in clubs and cafes and bars, anywhere she could sing and make a dollar. She would go to auditions. Everybody was telling her what she needed to do. And one day, her friend said, you know what? I think I can get you an audition in a Broadway play. And he did. She got a part in a rock opera with Richard, <laughs> Richard Gere called Soon. It was minimal, he had minimal success, but it knocked her on her way. Nell went on to do many hits, such as No Place to Be Somebody with Ron O'Neill. Don't bother me, I can't cope. Right. She uh, also was in Hair. She 
was doing a lot of things. She would not give up. And finally, she got her big break and ain't misbehaving. misbehaving. I remember. Anybody that went to see that play only went to see Nell Carter. Nell Carter. She was a huge star. And this got her a Tony Award. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nell was a celebrity of the night. They had a big cast party. It was like a child being in Disneyland. She looked around and saw familiar faces she had seen on stage, screen, and television for years. She was overwhelmed. People were drinking, laughing, kissing, having sex in the corner. It was a smorgasbord for your eyes. And someone walked up to Nell and said, Nell, you want a bump? Nell said, a, a what? A bump. What's a bump? that? He said, I'll show you. And they took out a mirror with a line of cocaine in a straw and showed now what a bump was. This turned into a $22,000 a day habit yeah, for Nell Carter. Really? Yeah. He was so immersed in this drug, and most people on drugs lose weight. But for some odd reason, Nell gained weight, and she balloons up to 300 pounds. Wow. She was really show. doing absolutely horrible. By this time, she had gotten a part on the show, Give Me a Break, Give me a and break. she was almost always late or missing. Mm -hmm. And one day she was missing, and they went looking for Nell, and they couldn't find her. So they sent one of the crew to her house, and they found her on the ground in a mink coat, naked and unresponsive. Her friend Liza Minnelli insisted that Nell go to rehab. Well, Nell goes to rehab, she introduces herself. She says, hello, I'm Nell Carter. So we don't give a darn who you are. Get your ass in there and clean that toilet. That was the kind of rehab it was, but it did get Nell back on her feet mm -hmm. for a time. When she got out, everybody was so shocked at how much weight she lost. She lost 97 pounds. That's she good. was ecstatic. By this time, Nell had already been through two bad marriages and she was headed for marriage number three. The third guy that she met, they wanted to have children, but instead of having children, she had three miscarriages. Mm. This sent Nell into a deep depression. Mm. What happened to the first kid? What happened to the first that, husband? That sister. The one that him. she, oh, you said she, but did she um still talk to him that that was her child? You mean her child she had by birth? Yeah. yeah. From what I read, they were cordial. Okay. But she didn't really play the mother mother role with her now. Okay. She craved the child, and that's why she wanted to have a child with her third husband. But instead of having children, she had three miscarriages. Mm. She could not carry a child after that. Okay. So she adopted two young boys and raised them. But she was so depressed because her husband was always abroad. He was never home. This sent Nell into a deep depression. She tried to get high and those deer herself to death. She just she stayed in the house and got high and didn't do anything. She was really headed downhill. Her husband got tired of the drugs. And of course, he divorced her just like her other two husbands. A marriage nice. which both had lasted less, less than two years. Nell thought she would never find happiness. The work was slowing down. And they said Nell was a very sweet person, but the drugs made her nasty. Uh, she would cut you out in a minute. Wow. And for some reason, although most drug addicts on crack lose weight, she kept gaining weight and gaining weight. Mm. She was really going downhill. Everything just didn't look good for her anymore. She wasn't getting any work. She was doing two twenty-two thousand dollars a day in coke, and she was owning, wow. earning fifty thousand dollars a week on Give Me a Break, and she was using all that money to store cocaine. Mm. Finally, when it looked like there was no way out for now, finally she got what she was looking for all her life. She found the love of her life, who helped her get off drugs, helped her revive the career she had, career. She had uh, achieved a role in a new play called Raisin, based on Raisin and the Sun. Mm -hmm. And she was about to start opening up in that play. All this was brought in by a new person she met who loved her immensely, and she loved her too. Her name was Ann Kaiser. Noah ended up spending the rest of her life with Ann. Oh, so she went to a woman? 
She went to a woman. Okay. She did another knee surgery. Now, then get back on her feet. Her feet, like I said, she was about to open in a play car, raising a big one, raising in the sun. She also had got a part in a new movie role that was coming up. She was so excited. She was in the bathroom getting dressed, putting her makeup on. And suddenly, they realized she'd been gone for a long time. Mm -hmm. Nobody had seen her. Where was she at? She was supposed to be putting her makeup on. She was about to open the next night. Well, her son went into the bathroom, and unfortunately, he found his mother on the floor. No Carter was dead at just the age of 54. Mm. She died in the year 2003. Mm. She had a heart attack? Complicated from diabetes and heart complications. Mm. So she diabetes. had both. But those are the stories of Carol Canning and rest in peace, Nail, Nail Carter. Carter. Wow. Carol Channing probably was similar to um, what we talked about yesterday about Johnny Cash's, Johnny Cash's first wife. wife. She she didn't live her life as a black woman. She was just a regular yep. woman. Yep. But when they found either out way she was you, black. Either way you pass, it's a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. Yep. That has yes. to be horrible looking over your shoulder. And just imagine standing in a room and hearing somebody say, I can't stand these lazy Negroes. And you standing right there. Mm -hmm. Or you see your brother... In in the in the restaurant, you gotta walk right past them. Yeah, you never get to know your grandmother. Yeah, you can't raise your hand and say "Black Power." Yeah, no, that's yep. true. It's a horrible way to live. You 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 have to be paranoid your whole life. Mm -hmm. Somebody yep. look at you too long, you're wondering mm -hmm. if they're thinking, "Is she black?" You're always paranoid. Exactly. Yeah, and you shouldn't live that way. And as it's regards like, to, um, to it's Dale like Carter, you sold your soul to the, it's like you sold your soul to the devil, yeah. and you're also denying what God made you. Yeah, I know. I know. And in regards to Nell Carter, um, I think Nell Carter was probably the first person I saw that size on TV. On TV, that's true. A black man. and she was known. She was known for being a, a, a diva, so she wasn't no mammy. Yeah. She was feisty. Yeah, she was. You know and I mean? she wasn't on the show she she didn't play a mammy type of character. Mm -mm, she was uh, No. She was who she was. She was in their family and right? they liked her. Well she took right? the kids. She took care of the kids. Yeah. Yeah, they wanted her to play a more submissive role, but yeah. she refused. Yeah. She refused to do it. Thank you. So she carried that stuff. That so who was you thinking about? Yeah. Who, who you thinking about doing um next time? Are you going to surprise us? She I don't know. I was, looking at, I was looking at Nat King Cole, and I was looking at Lou Goss. I mean Lou Rawls. Oh, but I'm still looking. And Lou then Ross. keep. I mean, keep it too. If you if you want one reveal, but I like when you have us guess as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's true. Yeah. Um, right. I have a request, oh, Lenore. Now hold on. Hold on. Today is your birthday, right? Yes. And you are twenty-one and standing. <laughs> no, I'm not that old. I'm only nineteen. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't rush you to twenty. So everybody in the room, let's sing Happy Birthday to Wendy. Happy Stevie Birthday, Wonder, Stevie women. Wonder, Stevie Wonder, Stevie Wonder. Oh, okay. Happy Birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. You always have to uh check. You ain't gotta harmonize. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. There you go. Right. Happy birthday to ya. God gave you, you a birthday. You remember a wonderful birthday with all my lovely presents. I felt bad because my girlfriend Linda, she gave me a cup too. It had Wendy on it. 
I said, oh, I'm going to use it for the show cup. I'm going to have to tell her now. I can't do it anymore because I have to use this cup now. That's right. That's for your morning coffee. <laughs> you can use your friend's cup for your no, water. No, ditch your lemonade. friend's cup and put ours in the place. <laughs> that be your morning coffee yeah. or tea. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so that's just a little something to show you that we care. Uh-huh, the token. And little I, family. And listen, here. We got a little I family going car- on here. I took that card. I bought myself a new pair of uh, earphones. Uh, I bought myself a, a, a meal, oh. a nice macaroni and cheese and fish and, and sweet potatoes. Okay. Yeah. You're I bought myself a bottle of wine. Money, I bought myself a bottle of wine, although I don't really drink, but I bought a bottle of wine anyway. So it went quite far. Oh, good. Mama said nobody can be your giving because how you've been giving too to the family. Hey, Isn't by the way, I'm not the I meant to ask you, Kim, did that T-shirt get re-gifted? Which one? The one I gave Kim. No, I have it. Mm-mm. I wear it. I air it all the time. No, we didn't re-gift that because it fits. Remember, we oh, said okay. if it fits. We'll tell you if it don't fit, we'll send it back to you if you want it. Well, I you said about that first too. one. The shirt. Yeah, you said you were going to try to lose weight and wear the first yeah, one. Yeah, I'm going to keep the first one. Oh, you still kept the first one? I don't one. want to end up like Nell Carter, so when <laughs> so when I lose weight, I'll wear the but first one. But you're not doing drugs. You should but isn't that, isn't that weird how most people on crack get bone thin and she kept getting fatter? And yep. she got bigger. Unless she just eat a lot. Unless her diabetes and it's not caused thing. it. Almost every woman that I've done over the weeks has turned to a lesbian. You know Everyone's that. true. You well, said, that's Hollywood. You said she ended up with this lady. Yeah, that's Hollywood, though. I guess after they the said no, they said that no was a big freak. Wow. And she loved the party. So she loved the party. Wow. You know, like Diddy. When you have such a, when you have like such a Diddy, she like huh? the party, party like, like Diddy, like P Diddy, right? You don't know. There's party and then party. there's party, party. But her habit was twenty two thousand dollars a day, and she That's, was making fifty thousand dollars a week. It's sad when their money is going to drugs and alcohol. Yeah, or just uh, wasteful living. I mean, it could be a heritage to their kids. It could be saving it, doing um, things in the community. Justice for all says, "Happy birthday, Wendy." Thank you, Justice. And Colleen says, greetings, ladies, and happy birthday, Wendy. So you can getting Thank happy you. birthday, love. That's good. There you go. This good Friday. Yep. All right, y'all. So that's it. Well, on this holy day, we cannot forgive prayer. This is good Friday. Yep. And I remember they praised him on Friday, and they crucified him on Sunday. And I say that to say, take note. Take no thought of what man thinks of you because man's opinion of you can change the drop of the hat. Yes. Your very own family member can turn on you. Mm-hmm. Don't put any invest anything in that. When people praise you, you really need to stay calm and stay focused and don't let it go to your head because right. even Jesus was praised on Friday and cursed on Monday. But anyway, they thought he was cursed, but he was really a blessing. Right. He gave he was his crucified. life. He rose mm-hmm. on He that was crucified day. on Sunday. That's right. But Lord God, we want to take the time to appreciate what you did for us. Had you not done it, who knows what state of mind we would be in. And we just want to say thank you, Lord, that you let your blood drip down. They said 39 stripes went for 39 different diseases, mm-hmm. I was told. Mm-hmm. You yes. really took it hard, but you knew why you were taking it, which probably meant it wasn't as hard as we think it was for you because you are Jesus the Christ. You know, people say Jesus Christ, like this is his first name and his last name. No, he's Jesus the Christ. That's who he is. And That's I just want to thank you and thank you, Father, for sending him and thank you, Holy Spirit, for maintaining that space on this earth where we have access to all three entities. People say, I don't understand other religions. I don't understand how three people can be one person. I said, they're not a three-headed monster. They're one in agreement. There you go. There it is. 
thank you, Jesus. We always say thank you, Jesus. But I really want to say thank you, Jesus, because the things I've been doing and going through, the things I've seen, both good and bad, yes. I could not have gotten or appreciated or endured without you being there with me. And I pray you would continue to pave the way for me to get to my dreams, along with yes. my sisters and everyone that's in this chat. Mm-hmm. We all have dreams, God. Let us see them manifested. And we have the ability to ask that because you died for us. And anything we ask in your name because you died for us, it shall be done. There's nothing new under the sun, Lord God. Mm-hmm. So we pray that you deal with everything that's trying to oppress us and give us joy, unspeakable joy. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. In Jesus' name, and for us as we pray, that faith, believing, hallelujah, and amen. Amen. Don't forget All to right. get the book. Don't forget Are to get out joke? Are you going to tell a joke? You want to tell a joke? Are you going to tell a joke? Uh, let's see. Let me just turn to any page. Um, a knight went off to fight in the Holy Crusades. But before leaving, he made his wife wear a chastity belt. After tightly securing it to her, he handed the key to his best friend with the instructions. If I do not return within seven years, unlock my wife and set her free to live a normal life. The knight then rode off on the first leg of his journey to the Holy Land. But he had only traveled barely an hour when he was suddenly aware of a sound pounding hooves behind him. He turned to see it was his best friend. What's the problem? Asked the knight. His best friend replied, you gave me the wrong key. You know what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How you know it's the wrong key? Uh-huh. That, was right. that was funny. Now, <laughs> don't forget to like, like Comment, like, share, comment, subscribe, and always believe. And that was another word report. All right, y'all. <laughs> See you Good later, TikTok. Tom. Have a nice weekend. Everybody have Everybody a good happy weekend. Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yes, See you later. everybody. Be safe. Happy birthday, Wendy.